Choosing an NFL imperialism usually means that you're immediately eliminated. But what if it didn't have to be that way? Introducing Redemption Island. Imperialism works the same as it did before. I'll randomly select a team to attack either an empty state, claiming it for themselves, or attack a territory with the team already on it, with the winner of their game claiming both territories and stealing a player of their choice. But now, losing teams will head to Redemption Island, where they'll be able to earn a second chance. Once two teams are on Redemption Island, they'll play each other with the winner being respawned into a random open state. If any teams are already eliminated, they'll be able to pick up one casualty of war from an eliminated team of their choice. Teams can only go to Redemption Island once, and once all of the states are claimed, Redemption Island is closed, and we go to single elimination. By the way, this video contains spoilers to my first Imperialism video, so if you haven't seen that yet, I recommend you go check it out. 32 teams, 32 dreams, let's get this party started, and let's see how much of this I can do in one take, because last time the recording was a pain in the buttinski. We are going to start things off in the heart of the South with the Atlanta Falcons. And they are going to head south, as you might imagine. And that puts them up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a common theme of this video is going to be that the computer absolutely sucks at onside kicks. Like I got a face full of something, I don't want to say. Jaguars win this one 24-16. And basically nobody we can steal on the Atlanta Falcons. So they get Chris Lindstrom. Scherf slides over to left guard. As you might imagine... Georgia turning that shade of puke green. Not sure how to describe that. Next up, we're going to get the Minnesota Vikings. Now, they have a lot of open states next to them. And getting open states is going to be real bad for the other teams because that eliminates the opportunity to return from Redemption Island, as you can see there. There goes one of the open states. In fact, we're going to see another one right now. The Seattle Seahawks only have open states surrounding them. They're going to take Idaho, I totally know my geography, guys, to their east. Turn number four already. Wow, we're on fire. Miami Dolphins up next, and they only have one place to go. That's north to face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kind of a bad spawn point for Miami now that I think about it. I, I, hey, I didn't place these teams. And right away, we're going to see a 66-yard touchdown and some horrific lag. Um, unfortunately, also a common theme of this video, it took me like 18 total hours to record. We do get to see Brady and the Creamsicles this time. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to do that last time, and it's the actual Brady, not imposter Brady this time, so that's nice. Second and three now, and you can see the Buccaneers punch it right up the middle. Leonard Fournette is going to put this game away, a 35-23 to victory. Hey, one of Brady's teams actually gets to stick around this time. And as you might expect, Tyreek Hill coming over from the Miami Dolphins. Going to eliminate that gray. And look at that. We already have a match on Redemption Island. That was short. Uh, Falcons kind of ran away with this one. But they will be the first team to respawn. And the Falcons are going to respawn in New Jersey. Not really a uh, good place to put the logo. We'll just kind of put it there. Turn number five. We are going to land on the Cincinnati Bengals just barely. The arrow is going to point them north, and that gives them an interstate rivalry with the Cleveland Browns. Now, you're going to notice a couple times in this video that you're actually seeing it from the player perspective. That's because the first play where Jamar Chase absolutely mosses a cornerback there. Uh, I had to play technically as the player, but I set the controller down and let the CPU do everything. I was on defense there, although, again, didn't do anything. Um... The Cleveland Browns defense really isn't doing anything anyway because Jamar Chase gets another big tackle and Joe Mixon up the middle for a touchdown. Bengals take a 35-31 lead. I am not going to make any Deshaun Watson videos in this joke. You can make your own because unlike Deshaun Watson, I actually respect women. Down 35-31 at the two-minute warning. Watson is going to take it himself. Nice spin move there to get a first down. Now, in field goal range, but field goal doesn't help them. Watson's going to take it again. He is sacked. Sam Hubbard, his second of the game. Third down and 16. But he finds Amari Cooper, and it's a fumble. It's actually scooped up by Christopher Bell. Lucky break there as the Browns keep the ball. Now, to the end zone. Touchdown, Amari Cooper. 
I uh, kind of forgot what happened in a lot of these because it's been like a week since I recorded this. I do know that the Browns won this one 38-35, and I think we all know who's going to be stolen. It's Jamar Chase after a 182-yard three-touchdown performance. He and Amari Cooper are going to be a great one-two punch, both in terms of skill and in terms of jersey number. Taking an updated look at the map, Browns have all of Ohio, Dolphins will host the Bengals, so the host team is going to be whoever is on Redemption Island the longest. Here, the Dolphins were already on Redemption Island when the Bengals got there. They host the Bengals, and they win 37-26. Remember, Bengals aren't out. They'll still get an opportunity, but the Dolphins are going to respawn in Iowa, where if they lose a second time, they will be eliminated. But now they have a chance to go steal some players and win some games. We're going to see the Los Angeles Chargers. They had a great run in the last video. And we are going to get straight to the LA versus LA matchup. Rams versus Chargers. So technically the Chargers not really attacking. They're in their own stadium. And you can tell they were vibing a 40-14 to beatdown. Look at that score breakdown. 10 points in every quarter. I don't think I've ever seen that. Aaron Donald, obviously the steal. He's a 99 overall. Pretty much my rule for steals is if you have a 99 overall, steal the 99 overall. Chargers are going to claim all of Southern California, and we're going to have a Super Bowl rematch, a fairly recent one here in the Bengals and the Rams. Cam Akers in those throwback jerseys, punches it up the middle for the touchdown, and the Rams take a lead, and the celebration lagged out horribly. So there you can see the Rams won that 31-28. And they will respawn in Delaware. There was already too much blue, so I gave them that ugly bone color that they wear sometimes. It makes me really mad. And now we have our defending champion, the Buffalo Bills. They are once again going to battle with the Giants to the Northeast. Don't ask me why I put that there. That's just what Dean's World does. And this is another blowout. We will have less blowouts later in the video, I promise. But best we get some matches over with. Uh, you saw in the last video how much Saquon Barkley impacted the Bills, so he's going to get stolen again. And then we head to Redemption Island, where the Bengals take on the Giants. Down eight, Daniel Jones. Minute to go, over the middle, finds a receiver for the touchdown. The two-point conversion, trying to run it up the middle, and he is eaten up by Jesse Bates, Matt Breda, is the starting running back in Saquon Barkley's absence. Couldn't get it done. They did not recover the onside kick, and the Bengals will get out of Redemption Island and respawn in South Carolina. Next, we have the Chicago Bears. They were the first team out in the last video. And once again, they are going to have to go play the Colts. Down for Justin Fields right before the two-minute warning. Finding a receiver in the end zone. It is Chase Claypool. Traded over from the Steelers. That puts the Bears up three. But the Colts are looking for more here on first down. Hand off to Jonathan Taylor. He is going to be decked. But you can see over 100 yards. Second down. No time remaining. So they just decide to settle for the field goal. We go to overtime. Where a nice pass there. Again, it's Chase Claypool getting the ball down to the two. Out of the I formation. Bouncing off of a tackler, bouncing off of a second tackler, and Montgomery is into the end zone and attacks a third tackler there, actually. New overtime rules, so the Colts are going to get the ball second down and 23 after a sack. Going deep, and somehow managing to find, I think that's Alec Pierce. Yep, Alec Pierce, great catch there on the sidelines. 500 yards of offense for them. And now Nick Foles over the middle, finding... Pierce again for the touchdown. We're tied at 34. Now the next score will win. Justin Fields taking matters into his own hands, scrambling for a first down there. And they will just kick a field goal, get the battle over with. The Bears exact revenge on the Colts, and the Colts will be going to Redemption Island. A 37-34 victory there for the Chicago Bears. And we see the Colts and Giants now, a good old Manning Bowl. And you might notice Matt Ryan is in the game now. So I had to reorder all of the depth charts every game. And uh, in this case, Matt Ryan has a higher overall than Nick Foles. So he gets to be the starter. 
and you can see things a little bit rough for him there. Landon Collins with a game-sealing interception, 17-13 Giants lead, but they are not going to go away with a four-point win. They'll go away with an 11-point win. Matt Breda with an exclamation point. The Giants will win this one 24-13, and interestingly, claim Wyoming. We're going to get a lot of weird matches in this imperialism with all these respawns. Back to the Dolphins now. They're in Iowa now, as they will face the Chicago Bears. I made a nice little arrow to demonstrate that they're heading southeast into Illinois. Once again, I'm letting the computer control the defense. Crookshank steps right in front of, I believe, Jalen Waddell. And Crookshank is going to go into the end zone for the touchdown to take the lead. Dolphins, though, not going away. Fourth down and five. Tua Tonga-Vailoa finding Jalen Waddell. He's to his new favorite target now that Tyreek Hill's out of town. Out of the pistol here. Tua in trouble. Rolling. Going to take it himself into the end zone. No, actually down at the one. Gets a little bit of a spoiler on the next play. Tua is going to roll out. And this time, no, he throws it actually to Mike Gesicki. Fooled everyone, including me who watched this game already. Mike Gesicki gets a game-tying touchdown, but the Bears have the ball with some time. Great catch there by, I believe, Cole Komet. And that sets up a game-winning field goal from the 35-yard line, a 52-yarder. It is drilled, and the Bears are going to win this one 34-31. The Dolphins are going to be the first team eliminated from imperialism. Remember, you can't go to uh, Redemption Island twice. Taron Armstead is going to be the steal. There's not really anyone left to steal from the Dolphins. Uh, but we will see some Dolphins in this video still to come. Because remember, anyone who was left over as a casualty of war can still get claimed. Meanwhile, the Seattle Seahawks are going to take away another opportunity for Redemption Island teams as they get the empty state of Oregon. Next up, we are going to land on the Detroit Lions. Their first time in this video. And they are heading west, southwest-ish. And I couldn't tell who that was pointing to, so we go to the tiebreaker wheel, everybody's favorite. It points to the Bears, and the Bears are going to have their third game now. This one was not particularly close. A 31-17 win. Bears get win number three. And as per usual, Frank Ragnow is going to be the steal. Just tough luck there by the Bears. Two steals have to go to offensive linemen. But they're starting to get a nice chunk of change in the Midwest as the Colts play the Lions on Redemption Island. Down 10, third and 23. Well, I must be showing you this for a reason, and it's because that pass is complete for a first down. Goff already with two touchdowns in this game. Can he get number three? It's first and goal. Yes, he can. Touchdown. They're within three points. Nice uh, DX celebration there, I guess. Colts with a long field goal attempt here. It is going to be well off the mark. This was from 56, I think. A risky play because now that gives the Lions good field position. And they're only down three points, folks. They only need a field goal. And with under a minute to go, Jared Goff is going to fire it over the middle. It is caught. And now they are in field goal range. Can they get any more? No, they cannot. They'll kick a field goal with 10 seconds left and no timeouts. And that sends this game to overtime. Michael Badgley putting it right down the middle. We are tied at 24. Lions with the ball first. Midfield. And this one is going to be intercepted. And the return goes all the way down to the 20. I have the preview window too small, so I can't read his last name, unfortunately. But this is going to set up a 34-yard game-winning field goal by McLaughlin. I do know that name because he was very prevalent in the last video. And now here he gets a game-winning field goal to send the Colts out of Redemption Island. A 27-24 win, and finally Matt Ryan gets a win for the Colts. Jalen Waddell available as a casualty of war, so he is going to become an Indianapolis Colt. 
And where will they respawn? They will respawn in Utah. You can see they are completely surrounded by teams. Lots of interesting matchups there, including a potential uh, Peyton Manning Bowl. After we had the Peyton versus Eli Bowl earlier, maybe they'll even rematch. Just missing out on an opportunity to go to the Colts again. Instead, the Jaguars are going to be up. This is going to be their second game. They're heading east, but remember, South Carolina now owned by the Cincinnati Bengals, so it's going to be Jaguars and Bengals, and if the Bengals lose this game, they are out. We got Color Rush versus Color Rush. Bengals down five. They are driving here with a first down. Joe Burrow dealing 250 and two touchdowns already in this game. And here he finds another receiver. That is T. Higgins. But he does not get the first down. He's stopped by Shaquille Griffin. Fourth down and one. Burrow to save the Bengals. It is caught, but a fumble. Devastating there on the goal line. It looked like they were going to have first and goal. Instead, it is pried away by Lloyd. And taking one more look, that's very clearly a catch and a fumble. But the Jaguars, not done. Trevor Lawrence, in spoiler alert, what will be his last pass as a Jacksonville Jaguar in this video, finding a receiver for a 92-yard touchdown and an exclamation point. The Bengals are going to be the second team eliminated. Evan Engram going 92 yards. And uh, no doubt about it, Joe Burrow is going to be the steal. 95 overall. Bengals players now eligible to be casualty of war pickups from Redemption Island. As the Jaguars starting to get a nice territory there. They have Georgia and South Carolina as well as North Florida. And now we're heading to the desert. The Las Vegas Raiders are going to head east. They're playing the Colts, and remember, if the Colts win, they stay alive and grab Nevada, but if they lose, they're eliminated. They are in the all-dark blues here. That's a jersey combo I made myself. Again, I'm playing CPU defense. Mac Hollins catches the touchdown, makes it a one-score game. But you have to remember, even without Jonathan Taylor, they have Zachary Moss, and he is proving it to be a pretty... Decent replacement as they end up winning this game 30-24. to They steal Devontae Adams from the Raiders, and the Raiders heading to Redemption Island to play the Detroit Lions. And this one was an absolute blowout, 41-12 to shellacking. The uh, classic jerseys did not help the Lions. Jesse Bates going to be the steal. Nice upgrade there at free safety. Remember, he was a casualty of war from the Bengals, and somehow I did not record the wheel spin, but my Steelers are going to be in action. Tough matchup against the Buffalo Bills incoming. Down three points. The Bills with three minutes to go in all three of their timeouts, and they have Josh Allen at quarterback. So what could they do? How about a sack? Number five on the game for TJ Watt. Pay attention to that stat, and that's all I'm going to say. Second down and long now, finding Gabriel Davis over the middle. I tell you what, Josh Allen loves Gabe, Gabe Davis in this game. He was getting a ton of targets in the uh, Tom Brady video. And now Josh Allen is going to pick up a first down there, scrambling. In field goal range now, Allen breaks out of sack number six for TJ Watt, and he is going to get a huge gain down the sidelines, breaking another tackle of Miles Jack and down to the six. Josh Allen, a weapon both in the passing game and the running game. Third and goal. And this time he is not going to get away from TJ Watt. Sack number six, one away from tying an NFL record by the late Derek Thomas. They're going to have to settle for a field goal and we are tied at 23. Going to overtime now. Von Miller says, wait a minute, I can sack the quarterback too. And sack number four for Von Miller, and he's just getting started, he says. So on third and 17, upcoming, they do nothing and punt. And TJ Watt is in the zone. Sack number seven, tying the NFL record. Nowhere Josh Allen could go there. Pocket collapsing, and after a 15-yard gain, Cam Hayward in pursuit. But it's going to be TJ Watt again with sack number eight and a fumble. Cam Hayward picks it up. The line absolutely collapsed. TJ Watt, I love this man. He gets an NFL record eighth sack. Cam Hayward scoops up the ball, 
great field position for the Steelers. They don't even run a snap. They're just going to go ahead and kick this in with Chris Boswell and escape Buffalo with a 26-23 upset win. And I could have gone with Josh Allen to replace Kenny Pickett, but Pickett was dealing in that game. I believe he had 300 passing yards. So instead, we're going to give Pickett a weapon with Stephon Diggs. We'll see if that pays off or not. Steelers uh, currently located in Rochester, I guess, is the Bills and Lions playing on Redemption Island. And this one actually was pretty close. Lions with a chance here, driving in Bills territory, down only seven until Vaughn Miller sacks with a fumble. It's actually going to be recovered by the Lions, but that really puts them behind the eight ball. Fourth down and 19, needing a huge play, going for it all, and just can't complete the catch. The Bills are going to win this game 17-10. to They're going to get T. Higgins to replace uh, Stephon Diggs that got stolen just a game ago. And you might notice why I'm putting Gray there. I tried like 10 games between the last two videos to get them to wear the uh, gray pants from their AFL days. It kept glitching out and giving them white pants. I don't know why. Uh, so out of retaliation, I'm going gray. Rams going northwest, and it's just not north enough to go into the Philadelphia Eagles territory. Instead, they will go to Baltimore to play the Ravens. Big stakes here. If they win, they get Lamar Jackson. If they lose, they are eliminated. And Lamar Jackson saying, I don't want to be a Los Angeles Ram. Throwing a dot over the middle, getting the ball down to the one. Devin Duvernay on the reception. And now second and goal. Finding a receiver. And that, this time it's Rashad Bateman for the touchdown. The Baltimore Ravens taking a 21-17 lead. Last chance for Matt Stafford and the Rams. Going for it all. And almost caught by Van Jefferson, but he couldn't bring it in. And so the Rams will be eliminated. Actually, the teams that played in the Super Bowl coming into this game, uh, Super Bowl 56, were two of the first three teams eliminated. The Rams eliminated in 30th place, and the Ravens will claim Delaware moving on to fight another day. Cooper Cup going to be a steal. Uh, the 70 overall rated receivers did pretty good, but they are no Cooper Cup. And uh, Jalen Ramsey proving to be a nice prize as the next uh, casualty of war for whoever escapes Redemption Island next. It's going to be the Houston Texans going west in our next game and getting absolutely obliterated by the Cowboys. Even a late comeback wasn't enough. They never stood a chance. They will grab Laramie Tunzel off of the Texans, but that's okay because the Texans in Redemption Island have a chance to win Jalen Ramsey, and they're going to play the Detroit Lions. I think this is game number four for them now on Redemption Island. Big sack here on second and five with only 30 seconds left. Late fourth here. And now 4th and 16, going deep, overthrown, but hold everything. That is going to be pass interference. So the Lions getting a second chance here after what looked like that was going to be a game ender. And now with their second opportunity, a pass over the middle, and another flag. This one's going to be a face mask. Lots of mistakes here by the Texans. If they do end up winning this game, having Jalen Ramsey will be a huge benefit. Christian Kirksey, the usually reliable veteran, going to get flagged there. And with six seconds left, they're only going to get one more play. Well, they're definitely only going to get one more play now as that one is intercepted at the goal line. It's not going to be returned all the way, so Texans minus six betters, uh, Unfortunate for you guys, Lions minus six betters, sighing a sigh of relief. However, the Texans are going to escape Redemption Island, and that's what matters. A 17-12 win over the Lions. The Lions will have to fight out of Redemption Island again. And Jalen Ramsey is a Texan. That is a line that will probably never be set again. Spinning the wheel to see where they will respawn, and the Houston Texans become the South Dakota Texans. South Dakota... Dakotans, Dakotans, South Dakotans. Apparently I missed a clip there. That was on the Chicago Bears who spun due south, and that was right on the line. So we're going to spin the wheel, and they have to attack the Bills 
who are looking to make the most of their second opportunity after escaping Redemption Island. They do still have Josh Allen, and he throws on the run to T. Higgins, his new favorite target for a first down. The Bills are able to just run out the clock from there. Winning this one 28-21, they drained off pretty much the entire fourth quarter. Bills pick up a huge chunk of land in the Midwest from the Bears. They head to Redemption Island to play a divisional rival in the Lions. And we find them tied early fourth quarter, color versus color. You love to see it. Nice first down there on third down and eight. Jared Goff dealing 320 and two touchdowns so far. And that sets up a field goal with just under three minutes to go. Lions take the lead, looking like they might get off of Redemption Island finally. And indeed, there is a fumble scooped up by the rookie Aiden Hutchinson for the exclamation point. The Detroit Lions are finally going to escape Redemption Island after Aiden Hutchinson does his thriller dance. 31-21 is your final. Grabbing Bobby Wagner as a casualty of war steal from the Rams. And now we head to the wheel to see where they spawn. I swear I know my geography, guys. This is totally Kansas that they're spawning in. Uh, let's just all make some Wizard of Oz jokes and move on. We are next going to land just barely on the New Orleans Saints. Just like in the last video, they're going west into Texas to play the Cowboys. We pick this one up. Tie game, 35 seconds to go. Dak on the run, making a throw over the middle. Great catch. Couldn't tell who that was. Unfortunately, he was too zoomed out. But the next play, great blocking from that fantastic offensive line. There is going to be another first down, and we are marching closer to field goal range. And here it is, Brett Maher. He misses extra points, but he nails game-winning 53 yarders right down the pipe, and the Cowboys are going to take this one 27-24. Cowboys are going to steal Marshawn Lattimore, and suddenly they're looking to have a really stacked team. They could be a contender. And the bad news continues for the Saints as the Bears are going to escape Redemption Island now. They win 30-20. to We go to the state wheel, and once again, I would like to emphasize, I really know my geography, guys. I passed geography in fifth grade social studies. I totally know that this is Nebraska. Uh, please do not lambaste my lack of geography knowledge in the comments. We're going to land on the New York Jets for the first time in this video. And the arrow was ambiguous, so we're going to spin the wheel, and it's going to land on the Steelers. We know that they just picked up Stephon Diggs, and they're going to have to face another New York team. But you can see there a touchdown to Deontay Johnson, just barely getting over the line, and that's going to give the Steelers a 21-14 lead. But Stephon Diggs absolutely dealing in this one, 114 yards on 10 catches. But... You also have Kenny Pickett at quarterback, and uh, he's still a little raw. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Hardy Sr. there with the pick, and that's going to set up Mike White over the middle, finding a receiver. It's Garrett Wilson for the game-tying touchdown. We are tied at 21. We take this to overtime. Both teams punted on their first possession, so the next score is going to win the game. Cam Hayward says, sit down. Vicious sack. It's now second and 16. Make that third and 16 after an incompletion. And this one is intercepted. Devin Bush does his first competent thing as a Steeler. And he takes it all the way to the end zone. That is a game-winning pick six in overtime. The Pittsburgh Steelers win their second game of the video, 27-21. And as much as I wanted to steal Sauce Gardner, Quinnen Williams was the responsible pick here. 93 overall, giant improvement at defensive tackle, as you can see. Steelers now somehow own all of New York, while the Jets head to Redemption Island to play the Saints. We pick this one up, tie game, trying to punch it in, and he does. The Jets take a 31-24 lead late in the fourth. That is not Bijan Robinson, as I was told in the comments of the last video. He's possibly going to be drafted, we'll see. And this one is intercepted to clinch it. What a great pick by Reed. The Saints are going to win 31-24, to and they're going to escape Redemption Island. Saints all of a sudden looking like they might get stuck. And they're going to get a nice replacement for Quinn Williams in the form of DJ Reader from the Bengals as a casualty of war pickup. 
spinning the wheel to see where they respawn. And they're going to respawn away from everyone in main. So the Jets are back on the map, but they might not play again for a while. Meanwhile, we have the Washington Commanders up next. As a reminder, I spawned them in Virginia because spawning them in the bottom half of Maryland is stupid. They have a matchup against the Carolina Panthers, and Sam Darnold is in trouble here. A giant sack and a fumble. Thankfully, it's recovered, but that sets up third and very long with under a minute to go. Now it's fourth down and just barely out of the reach of DJ Moore. DJ Moore can't catch it. Hope you enjoyed being a Carolina Panther because you were about to be a Washington Commander as the Commanders win 21-13. And as promised, DJ Moore is going to form a great receiving tandem with Terry McLaurin to give Carson Wentz some weapons. Taking a look at the map, Washington starting to get a nice chunk of territory as the Panthers face the Saints. NFC South showdown. And the Saints actually winning this one by two scores. Make that one score after the Saints punch it in there for a one-yard touchdown. Saints ball, and amazingly, they go for it on fourth and three. The fullback run works to perfection, which means the Panthers either need a stop or to allow a touchdown. They're actually going to get neither as Kamara's down at the one. He had a monster game, and the Saints are able to run out the clock to win this one 24-21, and finally, they're off Redemption Island. They pick up Trey Hendrickson from the Bengals. Not a whole lot left. There's only two teams that are dead so far. Three teams, I should say. And the Saints are going to spawn in Mississippi. I promise this is actually Mississippi this time. No clickbait. I do know the difference between Mississippi and Alabama. Back to the big wheel with 28 teams still on it. We've only eliminated three teams so far. And we pick it up with the Houston South Dakotans. They are going to go north to play the Minnesota Vikings. So a first for the Vikings. Unfortunately, the footage for this one lagged out hard, but I had to keep it in the video for this incredible interception. Dantzler with one second on the clock denies Houston a chance at winning. And forget Dantzler, you should call him Randy Moss after making that interception. The Vikings are going to win this one 23-17. And the Texans are going to get eliminated in 29th and give up Jalen Ramsey to the Vikings. Now only 27 teams on the wheel as we go to the Cleveland Browns. They are heading west, and that means they're going to have to play the Bills, who are kind of on a hot streak. We find the Bills down four on fourth and three. And this is when it helps to have Saquon Barkley for moments like this, picking up the first down at the two-minute warning. And now first and ten, Josh Allen... Tries to throw a dump-off pass, but it's intercepted. Josh Allen showing off his quickness for, spoiler alert, what will be his new team. Making the tackle, preventing a pick six. But the defense is not going to do their job. You can see Jones step right in front of Barkley. Josh Allen never saw him coming. And there is the clincher. A quick slant out to Amari Cooper to secure a 20-16 upset victory for the Cleveland Browns. And now that Steelers' decision not to take Josh Allen might loom large as Josh Allen is now a Cleveland Brown. The Browns now have a quarterback that respects women. And we are going to head to the opposite side of the country now with the Seattle Seahawks. They head south. That sets up this game with the San Francisco 49ers. More laggy footage. And that was almost a safety, but Garoppolo stays out of the end zone. Nice air guitar, dude. In any event, the Seahawks are going to take this one 31-24. Lots of players we could have stolen from the 49ers, but like I said earlier in the video, rules are rules. 99 overall, Trent Williams is now a Seahawk. However, the 49ers were able to escape Redemption Island fairly quickly. The Panthers continuing to get stuck there. And now we're going to see the Alabama 49ers. I don't know if there's any gold there. But we do have the San Francisco 49ers in Alabama, surrounded by some pretty decent teams, actually. We head back to the wheel as it's going to land on the Denver Broncos for the first time in this video. They are going to head west, and we are going to get that Peyton Manning Bowl as they face the Colts in Indy. Tie game, 24 seconds to go. Handoff to Moss. He's into the end zone. Jonathan Taylor, who... That gives the Colts a 28-21 lead. Make that 38-31, excuse me. And some fancy footwork. Russell Wilson's ready to fight someone. He 
and gets the ball here with only 18 seconds left off of his back foot, just on Cork's one, and it is intercepted. And the Colts are going to win this one 38 to 31. Russ was not cooking in this one, but Matt Ryan was. And Justin Simmons is going to head to the Colts as a nice upgrade at free safety. And the Colts are going to get Colorado. That's never happened before. Meanwhile, the Panthers continuing to struggle on Redemption Island. That's loss number three or four now. The Denver Broncos going to escape 31-20 to and pick up Christian Wilkins. I believe he was off of the Dolphins. Spin up coming to see where the Broncos will spawn next. They're heading to New England to grab Connecticut. Potentially interesting matchups there. I remembered in that quick clip to re-grab uh, Long Island for the Steelers. And right on the line of the New York teams, but the wheel says it's the Jets, and I'm not going to argue. They grab Vermont, excuse me, New Hampshire. Like I said, guys, I really know my geography. That removes one of the last available opportunities for Redemption Island. Just barely avoiding another Jets that could have been a disaster for the teams that haven't played yet. It says the Eagles, they go north to face the Steelers. That's not supposed to be how that works, but it is now. Eagles down two scores, but finding Dallas Goddard. How clutch was he in the Super Bowl? He seemed like he was everywhere. First and ten, minute to go. Jalen Hurts is going to get speared by Quinn and Williams, the new Steeler at defensive tackle. Third down and six. Over the middle, it's going to be caught in the back of the end zone by Devonta Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner. But as we said at the top of the video, the computer sucks at onside kicks, and there was just nothing that the Eagles could do in this one. 20-14 Steelers victory. That Steelers defense is looking pretty tough all of a sudden. In fact, it's about to get even tougher with the addition of Darius Slay from the Eagles. The Steelers now own all of Pennsylvania and New York as the Eagles head to Redemption Island. Panthers are actually making this one a game. They are sick of being on Redemption Island. They want to be back on the map. Eagles managing to get a first down there. They are not going to get a first down here. Absolute disaster. It's an interception to Chin, and he takes it back for the game-winning touchdown. The Eagles looked like they were setting up for a game-winning field goal. Instead, this pass is well underthrown. It goes the other way, and the Panthers are going to steal one 31-24. Instead, it's the Eagles who are going to get stuck on Redemption Island, and finally, the Panthers are going to make it back onto the map. They are going to respawn in New Mexico. Some interesting potential matchups there. And we head back to the Cleveland Browns. They just picked up a huge chunk of territory a few games ago. They're heading southwest, and that sets up a matchup with Kansas City. And you can see here, they are struggling, even with Josh Allen, at quarterback. He fumbles there, trying to do too much, and it is scooped up. Take one more look here. Just ran right into him, lost the football. Chiefs pick it up. They are leading 28-17. to They'll pick up an extra field goal near the end of regulation to win this one 31-17. And now it's the Browns going to Redemption Island, minus Miles Garrett, who is now a Kansas City Chief. 299 overalls on that team, and the Midwest has just turned red. Browns and Eagles now. Eagles on the doorstep to take the lead with three minutes to go over the middle. That is complete for the touchdown. Two-pointer would be no good. Eagles with a one-point lead, but Josh Allen is cooking. There is a first down to one of their about nine different really good receivers that they have on the roster now. And now looking over the middle for Kareem Hunt, who is going to pick up a first down. They're chipping away at this lead, trying to get a field goal to win the game. Third down and four, over the middle, finding a receiver. The Eagles burn up all of their timeouts. It's now just a field goal to win this game. But you know what's better than a field goal? A touchdown! Making sure that it doesn't come down to their kicker's leg. Instead, it's Kareem Hunt again. He picks up a touchdown for a 47-40 Browns win in Philadelphia. They're pulling a couple big upsets in this game, actually. 
Logan Wilson coming off of the Bengals. Not really anyone who would really help the Browns at this juncture. They pick up New Hampshire, and they're sandwiched right between the Browns and Jets. They're the Browns. Between the Steelers and the Jets. What am I saying? We're going back to Tampa Bay as Tom Brady is going to have nowhere to go but up. That's interesting to say, but in this case, they're going north to face Joe Burrow and the Jaguars. Joe Burrow throwing an interception there to David. His third pick of the game, one away from an NFL record, just stepped right in front of the receiver. And this is going to be an exclamation point touchdown as Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are going to beat Joe Burrow and the Jags. 28-14, to we now have a creamsicle southeast as the Jaguars face the Eagles on Redemption Island. We brought out the Kelly Greens for this one to try to inspire the Eagles, and it worked. 28-17, to Joe Burrow is looking like he might get stuck on Redemption Island, rejoin all of his old Bengals teammates. Xavier Howard going to be the steal off of the Dolphins. Now only four states left. The Eagles going to pick up Oklahoma. That sets up a potential matchup with the Dallas Cowboys. So we will see later in the video if that comes to fruition. Only three open states left, though. Time running out. Kansas City Chiefs are going to be up next. Just barely staying on them. Wheel heading north. And that sends them into Packers territory, actually, if you go from the center of the logo. Aaron Rodgers out of his darkness retreat. No, I had to go for that one. Very low-hanging fruit. Third and goal. It's going to be an angle route, and Aaron Jones is going to get the touchdown. Tie game at 17. But you left a lot of time on the clock for Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes is going to make you pay on the run to a wide-open Kadarius Toney, and he goes all the way for the touchdown. Very quick strike there for the Chiefs. Huge touchdown that takes a 24-17 lead. Left some time on the clock for Rodgers, though, but that one is thrown into double coverage and intercepted. He tried to force something. Aaron Rodgers looked embarrassing, throwing a pick and then getting barreled over by the defender. Chiefs would get a field goal right before the gun to win this one, 21, excuse me, 27-17. And they still Jair Alexander, so look at that defense. In fact, just look at that team, period. Five players at 95 overall or better as the Packers go into Jacksonville, and surprisingly, Jacksonville's kind of running away with this one. They are going to pick up a win and escape, although they do have uh, Joe Burrow, so I guess that isn't super surprising. The Jaguars are going to get one of the last three remaining states, 31-21. to Joe Burrow remaining in this video, as is Javon Holland. I believe he was also a Miami Dolphin. Again, not a whole lot since there have been a lot of casualties of war and not of eliminated teams. Jacksonville going to pick up Arkansas, uh, Jacksonsaw, Jaguarkansas. I'm going with Jaguarkansas, personally. Back to the wheel we go as it lands on the Chicago Bears, who are currently occupying the state of Kansas. They're heading south to face the Eagles. This video makes no sense. Kelly Greens for the Eagles and the winged helmets for the Bears. Bears about to punch it in here with Montgomery, but hold everything. There's a flag. It's going to be a holding on the offense. That touchdown comes off the board. They settle for a field goal. Now 19-17, the lead for the Bears. Hurts rolling out, trying to do something himself. He is clobbered, gives up the football, and it is scooped up. Bears with possession. You can see Hurts just got lit up there. Now 19-17, looking for a touchdown to put it away. Batted down, though, and they will settle for another field goal. With the score 22 to 17, Hurts. This time he's going to hold on to the football as he picks up a big first down. In fact, there's another flag on the Bears. It's going to be a face mask. So add 15 to that big run. Now with the ball at the 20, second down and 10, 37 to go. Finds a wide open man in the end zone. It's Devonta Smith. How clutch has he been this video? And that gives the Eagles a huge comeback victory, 25-22. to Eddie Jackson going to be the pickup here. Again, not much you can really steal off of the Bears. And the Bears are going to be eliminated. The Eagles pick up Nebraska. Next up, we have another spin I didn't record. The Giants attacking the Raiders. 
We can see that the Raiders are up five. Chance to end it here. Jones dropping back. But he finds a man for the touchdown and the Giants take a lead. And it is a lead they would not relinquish as the Giants steal this one 23-20. Giants offense has been cooking actually, so Max Crosby is going to be the steal here for a huge upgrade at linebacker. Back to the wheel with six teams eliminated and we have the Minnesota Vikings coming up next. They are headed west, and that gives them a matchup with the Giants being thrust right back into action. And this one was too laggy to record. Giants ran away with this one, 38-24. In case you're wondering, I've been changing a lot of the jersey numbers, so here Isaiah Hodgkins is going to lose number 18 because Justin Jefferson is going to be the steal. I usually tried to get like their college number or something if that was available, but obviously Justin Jefferson is going to be the steal here. He's going to wear number 18 for the Giants as the Giants pick up a big chunk of territory, and the Vikings going to Green Bay to face the Packers in one of the last Redemption Island showdowns available. And here we can see a big pick up there by TJ Hawkinson. 20 seconds to go, finding a receiver. It's KJ Osborne. He's tackled inbounds, so fourth and five, 11 seconds to go. Finding a man. It's Adam Thielen. Seven seconds now, but they need a touchdown. And they may only get one opportunity at it. Cousins, clock rolling down. It's a dump off to Dalvin Cook. However, it looks like there's going to be a flag, maybe a second opportunity. Yes, a face mask. So that redeems the Vikings. They get one more chance. And with the ball on the five-yard line, this is for all the marbles. It is broken up. And that was a stupid pass anyway, if I do say so myself. And the Green Bay Packers win this divisional showdown, 31-24. They are going to escape Redemption Island just in time. Only two states remaining, and they are going to pick Rhode Island. I guess the wheel is going to pick Rhode Island, not their choice. And that puts them right in the heart of Broncos and Patriots country. In fact, speaking of the Packers, it looks like the wheel is just about to clip over to them. Instead, it sticks on the Detroit Lions. They need to go anywhere but east, but unfortunately that's exactly where they're going, right into Chiefs Kingdom. And they are going to get eliminated here. 37-10 victory for the Chiefs. Chiefs knock out the Lions. They also steal Bobby Wagner, who was himself a steal from the Rams. Now we go back to the wheel, and this time it is going to be the Denver Broncos. And they head north to face the Patriots. They have to win this game or they're eliminated. And remember, only one state remaining on Redemption Island, which is not going to be the Broncos. They are eliminated in a 41-27 route. The Patriots slowly grabbing up more of New England, and they completely surround the uh, Packers now. They'll also steal Patrick Sertan to get a nice boost in the secondary. Back to the wheel, and in fact, we're going to see the Patriots right back into action. This time, they're going to go on the road, but to where? And the wheel says west. They're going to face the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have been on a roll as of late. Third down and one. Again, this is the computer controlling it, but the computer opens up a seam for Najee Harris to go up the middle. It is going to be a 17-10 lead for the Steelers. But the Patriots are driving third down and three at the 22, but not much time left on the clock. And under pressure, Mac Jones just does get it off, but it's short. It's going to be fourth and in inches. And on one of the last plays of the game, it is caught. The Patriots will have to take a timeout. And there's only four seconds on the clock. They need a touchdown here to stay in the game. And under pressure, no choice but to dump it off. And the Steelers are going to grab this one 17-10. The color rush jerseys work again against the Patriots. And that means the Patriots are going to head to Redemption Island. There will be only one more game there. By the way, Patrick Sertan, this Steelers secondary is now loaded. Don't forget they have Minka too. The Steelers grabbing Massachusetts and Connecticut. Took me a couple tries to raise that line. The final Redemption Island game is taking place in Minnesota, which is very much not an island, but that is what it is. This one is caught. The penalty is going to be defensive pass interference, and this touchdown is going to stay on the board, giving the Patriots a 20-17 lead.
Now it's the Vikings' turn with the football. They're down three. They need to score. Play action. Kirk Cousins firing over the middle. It is caught. And that's going to be a big first down. Now out of the no huddle, minute to go. They only need a field goal, but you know what's better than a field goal? Throwing it out of bounds. They'll settle for a field goal. And that means with 26 seconds left, the Patriots still have one more chance. It's intercepted! Disastrous! It's picked off by Kendricks. And that gives the Vikings great field position. Taking one more look. Terrible decision by Mac Jones. And with 22 seconds left, Dalvin Cook is going to punch it up the middle to put it in field goal range. And this is going to be a fairly easy field goal from 38 yards. It is good. And the Minnesota Vikings will get the final spot off of Redemption Island. The New England Patriots will be eliminated. Your final here in Minnesota is 23-20. to Christian Wilkins is going to get stolen off of the Dolphins. They need a lot of help at right end, as you can see. And only one state remaining, the Vikings heading to West Virginia. Back to the wheel now, and it is elimination for every game now. No more Redemption Island. It is closed, and the Kansas City Chiefs are heading south to take on the Titans. And as you can see, the Titans are about to get eliminated here. A late touchdown was not nearly enough as the Kansas City Chiefs continue to be on a roll they win this one 30-20. They take over Tennessee, and the Titans are eliminated. They will also steal Derrick Henry as if they were not stacked enough. Quick lightning round here. The Indianapolis Colts are going to kick a field goal as they are being attacked by the Cardinals. That gives them a 19-16 lead. And now the Cardinals trying to drive down the field, going deep, and this one is caught. Huge game down to the 20. Great pass there by Kyler Murray. And now second and goal. Opportunity to win the game. Pass over the middle. And he fights to the goal line. Breaks the plane. And the Arizona Cardinals on that Zach Ertz touchdown. Reminiscent of the Super Bowl a few years ago. Taking one more look. He just does get across the plane before he's down. Kyler Murray is excited. They're going to move on. Unless the Colts have anything to say about it. On third and inches. This one's intercepted, and now the Cardinals can celebrate a 23-19 victory. Devontae Adams going to be the steal here, and they are loaded at wide receiver now. And the Arizona Cardinals are getting a nice chunk of change. The Colts eliminated. And back to the wheel. It's going to land on Josh Allen and the Cleveland Browns. Not a sentence I expected to say today. They are heading southeast. And look what we have here. It's Browns versus Steelers. Steelers down eight, back in the color rush jerseys. It worked last game. That is a completed pass over the middle, I believe. Oh, it's Deontay Johnson, excuse me. They still need a touchdown, a two-point conversion. And Pickett finds Deontay Johnson again. Here's second and three, just before the two-minute warning. It's caught by Stephon Diggs. It's going to be first and goal at the two-minute warning. On second and goal now. Looking, but it's intercepted! He was trying to force one to Diggs, and Newsom, the second, is going to intercept this one in the end zone, taking one more look. Stephon Diggs really should have had this one. He just didn't go up to fight for it for some reason. That is a classic Madden AI moment. And this run by Kareem Hunt is going to put it away as the Steelers are out of timeouts. And unfortunately for me, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be eliminated. No types of scoring in the second half. And Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen are reunited once again. I wonder if the Steelers are rethinking that Josh Allen decision. This is an ugly sight as the Browns now claim most of the Mid-Atlantic. And we head back to the wheel. The Kansas City Chiefs in action again. They're loaded, but they might be playing with fire here. Going back to the wheel one too many times. And from the center, you can see that Due South is actually heading for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're going into Jaguar, Arkansas. I'm just using every opportunity to say that because this one was an absolute beatdown from start to finish. 27 to 15 is your final. And the Chiefs knock out Joe Burrow and the Jaguars. And since Joe Burrow is no help to them, ironically, Josh Allen is. Again, you can make your own jokes. 
And right after that big win, it's going to be the, I take that back, it's the Dallas Cowboys. The wheel fooled me. They're heading west to face the Carolina Panthers, who couldn't get off Redemption Island to save their lives earlier. However, they have an opportunity to uh, knock out the Cowboys here. They get a stop. They need a couple more stops to get the ball back. And on third and goal, Dak Prescott looks like he's going to take it himself. Instead, he tries to throw it, but a horrible pass. And now the Panthers have a chance, but it's broken up on fourth and six. The Dallas Cowboys knock out the Carolina Panthers. They lost about 12 games in this video, and now they're finally eliminated. Brian Burns is going to provide a huge upgrade at left end, and we see that the Cowboys will claim New Mexico as the Panthers are eliminated, and we go right back to the wheel, and it's going to land on the San Francisco 49ers, who currently occupy Alabama. They are heading southeast. And this is going to be a high-profile matchup with the new, with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Wrong Brady team. I guess Brady was on all the teams last video. And uh, Brady will be on none of the teams now because he gets absolutely destroyed. The 49ers hang a 50-burger in Tampa. And the San Francisco 49ers move on. And the Buccaneers are eliminated. Tyreek Hill the steal here. 98 overall. Really no choice there. You know, we probably could have gone with this shade of red instead of the creamsicle, but now Florida is definitely that red for San Francisco as we head to the Dallas Cowboys next. Could we get that profile matchup with the Eagles? No, instead we're going northwest to face the Cardinals. Cardinals up eight, looking to put it away here. Kyler Murray rolling out, trying to take it himself. Nasty juke move, and he's into the end zone. The Cardinals go up two scores. Taking one more look just absolutely shakes him out of his shoes. And the Cardinals will hang on by that final score, 28-13. to Micah Parsons, the steal here, and the Cardinals are looking pretty good, actually. The Cardinals picking up a huge chunk of land. Unfortunately, we're not going to see Eagles and Cowboys. Maybe we'll see the Cardinals win it all. The map is looking pretty red right now, actually. Cleveland Browns back in action, as we'll see Allen and Diggs back together again. But who will their opponent be? The arrow says they're heading east, and actually that goes directly into Lambeau. So the Packers wearing their color rush jerseys. Rodgers taking it himself, tries to force one, almost picked off. They settle for a field goal, and the game completely lags here. But I did have to show that because it was a catch and a fumble. The Packers recover, and they win this one 20-14. Apologies for the video crapping out there. Stephon Diggs is going to get stolen for the third time in this video. Huge weapon for Aaron Rodgers. And the color actually doesn't change much. I'm colorblind, so maybe you can tell a bigger difference than I can. Back to the wheel, the Minnesota, or should I say West Virginia Vikings, are going to be up next. They are heading northeast, and we're going to see another Vikings-Packers matchup. Absolutely clobbered there. And the Vikings are going to get the ball with great fuel position, taking one more look, absolutely drilled. Remember, the Packers won the first of these matchups. The Vikings looking to win the second. Dalvin Cook getting it down to the five. Field goal does them no good, but a touchdown does over the middle. It is caught. Adam Thielen, he has been huge in Justin Jefferson's absence. Now the Packers needing a field goal to tie the game, and Rodgers forces another one. It's intercepted, and the Vikings exact revenge. They will be the ones moving on, and the Packers are going to be eliminated right after Rodgers throws a third pick. Jalen Ramsey on that one. He was a great steal. All the way back in that Texans game, back when they had South Dakota. Taking one more look, diving interception. Great play. 17-14 17-14 is your final, and the Vikings are going to get a nice chunk of New England. They also get Stephon Diggs, who is stolen, I think, for the third straight game. So with an unlucky 13 teams left, it is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs again. They've been in action a lot this video, and they are heading northeast, and the Vikings are going to be right back into action. And unsurprisingly, the Chiefs are going to take this one. Sorry for all the Vikings fans that got excited by that last game. 24-3, a dominant defensive performance. And now this map is basically entirely all red as the Chiefs have a huge chunk of land. 
playing lightning round here. The Commanders are going to knock out the 49ers 24-17. to uh, The 49ers pretty much didn't have the ball in the fourth quarter. The Commanders ran out the clock. We continue the lightning round as the Chargers knock out the Cardinals. Unfortunately, those color rush jerseys didn't work, as now the Chargers have a huge chunk of land in the Southwest. And the color rush jerseys do work for the Seahawks as they knock out the Chargers right after that big win. And now the Seahawks with a huge chunk of land. Nine teams remaining, and we are going to see the Ravens for the first time in a long time. They've only played one game in this video, and that was knocking out the Rams when they had Delaware. They are heading west into Chiefs Kingdom. This is going to be a very big matchup. We find the Chiefs down six, actually, but they still have Patrick Mahomes, who's going to try to take this himself. Instead, he fumbles and absolute disaster here, as this one is going to go all the way down to the end zone. A touchdown. The Ravens up two scores. And the Chiefs are going to get knocked out at Arrowhead. Last chance for Patrick Mahomes. It's intercepted after it bobbles around about three guys. The Ravens would actually tack on a field goal in the dying seconds of the game to win this one 31-14. And surprisingly, we are saying goodbye to the Chiefs. Look away Cleveland fans. Miles Garrett back on the Ravens like he was in the last video. And from the all-red map, we're going to an all-blue-slash-purple map. Eight teams remaining, and the New York Giants are going to be in action. By the way, all four NFC East teams still in this in the last eight. They're heading east, and they are going to send the Ravens right back into action. And to no one's surprise, the Ravens take this one easily. 38-10, to Miles Garrett certainly helping matters. As will Max Crosby, their defense is now stacked. Seven teams remaining, and from one New York team to the other, we see the New York Jets, who have been idling in the corner for quite some time. And only one place to go, they're going back into Baltimore. Ravens playing their third straight game, but the Ravens down one here. Screen pass on third and seven, J.K. Dobbins picks up a huge gain for the first. Now third and four, Jackson, quick dump off pass, but Dobbins can't stay in bounds. That's going to be a loss, and Tucker trying a 62-yard field goal for the lead, and he pushes it to the left. Tucker basically automatic from anywhere in the field, but a 62-yarder was just too big of an ask here, and that is going to give the Jets a 17-16 upset victory. The Jets, after doing basically nothing this entire video, are going to pick up a huge chunk of land and knock out the Baltimore Ravens. Good thing they didn't have to play the Chiefs. Miles Garrett's going to get stolen here for the second straight game, and he is by far the best player on the Jets. And we go from an all-red map to an all-blue map, and now an all-green map. Six teams left, and it's going to be the Seattle Seahawks in action. They are heading southeast. And that actually heads into Eagles territory. We are now entering the Devonta Smith arc as on second and three. Hertz finds Devonta Smith over the middle. Next play, who is he going for? Devonta Smith for the first down and goal. And for the third straight play, he goes to Devonta Smith for the touchdown. That ties the game at 28. But now Geno Smith, a different Smith, has an opportunity. Instead, he throws it right to Marcus Epps. And an absolute disaster is in the dying seconds of the game. Epps takes it all the way for the touchdown. That is going to give the Eagles a huge victory. Losing with under a minute to go. They win it in regulation. 35-28. Eliminating the Seahawks. And they will steal Aaron Donald in the process as they are continuing to look like the favorites. And from being attacked, the Eagles are now going to be on the attack. And you can see from the arrow, it's actually pointing to Mississippi. They're going to face the New Orleans Saints. This one's significantly less dramatic. The Kelly Green works again as the Eagles win this one 35-17, knocking out the Saints. And despite Marcus Epps' heroics a game ago, they're going to steal Tyron Matthew, 90 overall, with superstar ability. We're down to the final four. Let's meet our remaining teams. 
In the West, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. Four wins already in this game is a huge territory and the best quarterback in the game by far, Jalen Hurts. They are looking like the potential favorites. To the North, we have a surprise team in the New York Jets. They haven't played much, but they just grabbed a bunch of territory off of the Eagles, and they have Miles Garrett, which is always a threat. To the Southeast, we have the Washington Commanders. They have yet to lose a game in this video, but quarterback remains a huge issue. Carson Wentz is only a 69 overall. And still hanging out in New Jersey, we have the Atlanta Falcons. They have idled for basically this entire video. Four teams remaining, and the wheel is finally going to force the Atlanta Falcons back into action. It's been about an hour video time since they've played, and only one place to go into New York to face the Jets. They are finding themselves way down, but I did at least owe two guys to show a little bit of Falcons footage. That pass is going to be incomplete and the Jets are going to win this one 34-16. They make the final three, knocking out the Falcons in fourth place. Kyle Pitts is going to be the steal here. Not really much of anyone on the Falcons that would help the Jets besides Kyle Pitts. And the Jets finally claiming the stage in which they technically play. Three teams remaining, and the Jets are going to go right back into the attack. And rather than pointing an arrow, I'm just going to spin this wheel to see who they're going to attack. One of these teams is going to make it to the final. It's going to be the Washington Commanders, as the Jets take on the Eagles in a battle of green versus green. I couldn't give the Eagles the Kelly Greens here because they would have clashed too much. You can see how much Aaron Donald gives this defense a boost. He forces a fumble, and the Philadelphia Eagles pick the ball up. They just need to run out the clock to win this game. Taking one more look, Aaron Donald just tracked him down and Javon Hargrave comes up with the football. 39 now, Eagles badly needing a first down. They go for the pass, stopping the clock, and now the Jets are going to get the ball back with a timeout. Second down and one now, minute to go. This one is complete over the middle for the first. And now the next play inside Eagles territory. This time Zach Wilson's going to roll out. He throws on the run, and that is a huge gain to Garrett Wilson into field goal range. And that sets up this field goal with two seconds to go. It is good, and at the buzzer, the Jets knock out the Eagles. A stunning defeat. The Eagles were looking like the favorites. Instead, it's going to be the Jets and the Commanders in the Super Bowl. That's got to be a first for Matt. And now 299 overalls on the Jets. Miles Garrett and Aaron Donald on the line. I guess they'll flip the coin and see who plays right end. And they take on the Commanders in the Super Bowl. We pick this one up mid-fourth. Jets down seven. Long pass to Kyle Pitts, who's wide open. He was stolen just a couple of games ago, but he has been huge for the Jets. Apologies for the lag. I'd been recording for about 20 hours at this point. Zach Wilson on this play is going to roll out and take it himself. He gets a first down, and the Jets are in business. Now second and four, just before the two-minute warning. Guess who? Kyle Pitts picks up another first down into the red zone. Now on second and goal, Wilson is going to roll out to his left. He finds Garrett Wilson, but he is just short of the line. That will make it third and goal from the one. And this time, he's going to who else? But Kyle Pitts in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Just able to get the feet in bounds as the Jets tie the game with a minute to go at 21 apiece. Taking a look here at the replay. Just able to get both feet in bounds. This would actually get reviewed, but here's a replay I recorded after the game. Very clearly gets that second foot down. And now the Jets with an opportunity. Carson Wentz looking to win the Super Bowl. He couldn't with the Eagles. That's going to be a big pickup to DJ Moore. The Steel's balling out right now. Second down and 10, 30 seconds to go. And McLaurin catches it, but he fumbles on the hit. It is recovered by the Jets, and suddenly, CJ Mosley gets it down to the 45. Jets with a chance. They hand it off to Brees Hall. He gets a first down, and that sets up Greg the Leg Zerline for the win. And he hits it at the buzzer. The Jets win the Super Bowl, and they win NFL Imperialism Redemption Island. Unfortunately, I have to speed through the celebration here because my game crapped out to about one frame per second. 
taking a look at some of the highlights from the game. The Jets basically idled for most of this video, and like many teams in Imperialism, they struck when the iron was hot, were able to claim a lot of land, and they won it all. The New York Jets win Imperialism, and they claim the entirety of the United States. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one.